Okay, in this video, I'm going to show a cast I just got. Um, this one is it's called an Eagle Lake. It's a fairly new classification. Uh, this one's from Texas, and uh, it's from a private collection. The uh, time period it's dated to uh, 2500 to 1000 BP or before present. This is radiocarbon dating and um, I ordered it from Stonehenge Museum Supply okay so the, uh, the radio radiocarbon dates uh, had to be converted to uh, calendar dates so 2500 to 1000 BP uh, you start with the year 1950 subtract those numbers and you get a range of 550 BC to 950 AD so that's the date range for this particular uh, arrowhead. Now, uh, I talked a little bit about refinement in a previous video, and uh, I define refinement as uh, there's a few things here. Uh, one of them is symmetry. Uh, the others are. Um, uh, lack of errors, uh, straightness, uh, but there's a few more too. There's um, complex shape. Now with this complex shape you can get notching, uh, twisting, and uh, outline, uh, fancy outlines, instead of just, you know, the uh, simple lancelet outlines like this one here, you can have complex outlines. Uh, I don't have an example of that handy. Anyway, uh, let's see. Oh, you can also get serrations. If all of these are done very carefully, uh, it leads to refinement. Uh, you can also have, um, let's see, I guess most sources call it parallel flaking. Uh, you can also call it um, serial flaking. Uh, I call it sequential. Uh, but the flaking is usually carefully done uh, in series right next to each other and long, long flakes as well. Uh, the longer the more refined so uh, in general the longer the more refined so I think those are all the things that go into a refined point let's bring out a cast that I showed in a previous video from a Cody type this is a first view uh, oh yeah, one more thing is um, the tools that you use to make the uh, the artifact, those are also more refined as time goes on. Now, my argument is this, this type of, uh, these types of characteristics increase over time and not decrease. Um, there are you know peaks and valleys in that though as time goes on there might be a, a time uh, like right after the paleo era uh, during the paleo era that the kind of refinement peaked I don't know I guess around 8000 BC something like that anyway it kind of went down a little bit after that and there are there are some other you know peaks and valleys and then the point that I'm showing you uh, is at a time where 
it starts to go up, the refinement starts to go up. So I'm going to just say this is around um, 180. Okay, it starts to go up. More these points here, some of them, the best ones of this time period are more refined than the best ones of this time period. So that's what I mean by it increases over time. It's not a straight line. It's not increased steadily over time like that. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the best examples of each time period increasing in refinement over time. Okay, so uh, just to illustrate my point, this is a very refined point. Uh, I feel more refined than the, than the types that you find in the uh, late paleo, early archaic era that so many nappers are concentrated on. Um, and a lot of sources also call this ribbon flaking. But I'm just going to kind of show this slowly so you can see all the different characteristics that make this refined point. Uh, there's a little nick off the the uh, one of the ears. The symmetry is very good. These uh, little barbs are intentionally made to be slightly drooping there. Um, but the base, the flint napping on the base of this is different from the flint napping on the blade. So I'll need to do more research on this type of point. I'm not sure if there were different nappers doing the blade resharpening uh, than there were doing the, you know, the initial, uh, the initial shapes like the base. You can see that the uh, the napper could have put flaking like this on the base. Now there are two explanations for that. Uh, one is uh, the overall shape is done quickly or by somebody else, or it's hafted while this particular flaking is done, so that this flaking is not done on the base. But I don't go for that second explanation. I think that uh, the initial shape is done quickly. And then the napper, when it's still not hafted, carefully resharpens or carefully sharpened this one and then hafted it. Or as time goes on, it gets dull, he takes it out of the haft, resharpens it, and puts it back on. Now, one reason why I say that is because there's ribbon flaking that goes into where you typically have uh, glue for the hafting element. The the haft generally covers the whole entire stem plus a little bit more. Okay, so, and but you see the flaking, it would have to go underneath, especially right there, it would have to go underneath the glue, which it usually doesn't. It'll stop right at wherever the glue line is. But as you can see, there's flaking that covers right where the glue line would be to help make that transition between the, uh, the wood and the stone. So I believe these were taken out of the haft and this flaking was done while it was not in the haft. Okay, so again, the flaking, the symmetry, the uh, straightness of the edge, but there's also a twist to this blade, kind of a twisting effect and it's also symmetrical same almost the same amount of twist on both sides very consistent uh, one more thing on this refinement now that I remember is um, things that are done in miniature you know the, the overall size gets smaller the serrations get smaller the flaking gets smaller the uh, needle tips get smaller over time. So there's very slight serrations on the edge. It's done unifacially so you can see there's not many I hope you can see there's no, there's no flaking from the serrations going in on this side. Very few. There might be some but there's very few. You see the flaking all on this side. So that means the serrations were popped off from here going this way, just unifacially, and then flipped over 
Oops. Same thing on the other side. Popped off this in this direction. Because you can see the flake scars from the serrations on this side. And so alternately serrated, alternately twisted, or it's kind of like a beveling technique, but it produces a uh, what they call a twist in the blade. And of course, it's got you know the the hafting elements more complex than this one here. This one's just basically straight wedge shaped. This one's got some other things going on. Okay. The uh, thickness is very consistent. <clears throat> very few errors. Much less errors than the other earlier types. Let me see. Compared to the Allen, you can see a lot of step fractures. This is probably the best example of ribbon flaking from the late Paleo early archaic. And this is a later point, like I said. Much more refined. I hope the lighting is okay. That's why I'm taking my time showing this one. Okay. And uh few more casts that I purchased recently is this um can't remember the name now but agate basin and you can see there's a slight bend in the uh the blade. It looks like it might have been made on a long flake. But it's not necessarily so. It could have been that during the manufacture more mass was taken off here than somewhere else. And it just made it make it just made it look like it was you know slightly curved. Okay, so this is an agate basin. Flaking is you know kind of random. Very well executed, though. It's very consistent in in the uh, cross section in the uh, thickness. Okay, then I I ordered this Scotch Bluff. Now uh, I'm going to be doing Cody points in the f in uh, the first videos where I'm going to be trying to replicate this kind of flaking. I'm going to do a series of videos on how to replicate or what I consider to be the methods for replicating these types of Cody points. That'll be the first series of videos on that topic. And then I'll try to do the uh, the Allen points and the first first views. These flakes are, are skinnier, longer, a little more difficult to do than these. So I'll be doing these types first on video. Now the edges here have a slight bevel, um, and it's they're not <clears throat> they're not thinned down. Uh, it feels a little bit like it's got some use wear on it, <clears throat> but uh, I'm going to explore why they did it this way. <coughs> instead of thinning the edge down a lot like in some other points this is a very stout tool the edge is stout the blade thickness gives it some rigidity and it's got a very wide hafting area so this tool is meant to be used with a lot of force okay so also I got this a while ago this is from uh, the Blackwater Draw site, and I think they call these uh, Lindemeyer 
Folsom. Uh, I just want to show that it's thin, but it's not crazy thin. I mean, the the Allen has edges that are much thinner, and you can see. I mean, the comparable in thickness. Allen's much wider, and so these are not crazy thin. This, these Folsoms, but they are flat. Very flat, and the flaking. These beveling flakes or trimming flakes are very hard to uh, reproduce. Uh, and a lot of modern nappers like these too. Okay, so I think that's it for this video. I think I covered all the uh, the things that I was or the things that I consider to be uh, part of calling a point refined. These these items here. And uh, okay, that's it.